Hello and welcome to the Mixop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. This video demonstrates Rhino Cam 2016 being used to program 5-axis indexed and simultaneous toolpaths on a 12mm diameter ring design. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. So what I'm going to do is first go ahead and uh, load the file that you sent us in here. All right. So there's the uh, ring that you emailed us for the demonstration in here. Mm -hmm. And also you sent us a picture of your machine tool right in here. Yes. So by looking at the machine tool, it, uh, it looks like this could very well be your x-axis in here. That's a fourth one. Yes. This motor, what you're seeing here is your motor for the x-axis. Is that correct? No, no, that's not an X. I think the bottom one is an X. Yeah, this one right here, the one below. This is the one that can rotate. Yes, so that's the fifth here. axis. The one you show me is a fourth axis. And this is the fifth axis. Yes. Yes, these are the two rotational axes, which could be X, A and B, or you know, A and C or well, however it's going to be defined as on the machine tool. Yes, it's A and B, but A X, B. Y, Z, it's a 3D, I mean, a, a regular three axis C and C, C, and C right? X, Y, Z. These are the two rotational axes which are mounted on top of the bed of the machine. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this type of configuration is also known as a table table configuration where uh, the part is rotated on a trunnion where you have two rotational axes in here. Yes. So we will be able to um, support uh, you know a machine similar to this uh, with in our five axis module. So we would call this a table table configuration on a five axis machine and we should be able to um, uh, program uh, parts with these. Okay? Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is go through the process of um, programming how to set up the machine tool, how to program this part. We will go over that in the demonstration with you today. That's so, going to be awesome. All right. And I believe you already have rhinoceros, is that correct? 5.0, yes. Okay, you're using uh, Rhinoceros 5.0. Okay, great. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is first go through the process of defining the machine tool. So I'm going to click on the Rhino Cam and select Mill. Uh, you mm -hmm. can see that the milling browser interface automatically appears in Rhinoceros. We have two to five axis milling solutions. We have uh, for CNC late and turning late. centers we have a two axis turning application, we have nesting and also art. So here we're going to be focusing our attention towards the milling solution today. So the Rhino Cams interface has two browsers. You have the machining browser over here on the top half and right below here you have your machining objects browser. So mm -hmm. in the machining browser under the program tab you would first define your machine tool setup. So you would define the machining process here. So you could say uh, the number of axes you're going five to be using be five axes. And then right in here, you will see that there are three different types of configuration. Rhino Cam will be able to support it. So we have the head head configuration. We have the table head configuration. We also have a table table configuration. So what, what this means? Select, which means the type of the rotational axis. Now, in this particular case, the machine what you have has two rotational tables. So that would be a table table configuration. Okay. Now if the rotation was one of the rotation was like the four axis in here, the other one was on the spindle yes. where the head can rotate, then that would be a table and a head configuration. Now if it was a machine that had a uh, 
a gantry where the head itself rotates, something similar to this. This would okay. be a head head configuration. Yes, yes, yes. That's a, there are okay. three different types of uh, primarily three different types of five axis machine tool types, which yes. are very commonly used. And these are the three types we primarily support. So our machine is a table table. Your machine would be a table table. And also, uh, you'll notice that the two rotational axes are orthogonal to each other, which means they're perpendicular to each other. The, the rotation axis on the four axis, we call it the A. So here you would select the rotation axis as primary would be rotating about the X, as you see right there, the fourth axis. And then the secondary axis, the fifth axis, is parallel to the Z axis. Mm -hmm. and then you can specify the limits. So for the A, you can say you can only go minus 180 to plus 180 or minus 90 to plus 90. You can specify uh, how much the rotational axis can tilt on your A and B axis. So if you take a look at the picture again that you sent us, you can specify what are the limits of the primary so axis. That, that fifth axis, that the rotating like uh, rotation of 360 degree. Yes, you can but we that don't want that in case, this case, yes, right? So the the C, the secondary axis, which is your fifth axis, can rotate 360 degrees. Yes. So you could go minus to plus 360 or minus to plus infinite, but the limitation could be on the fourth axis, the primary, because you may not be able to turn. You may only be able to rotate in one direction, for example, right? Yes. So you can specify those parameters and also. Here you can specify which side is the rotational axis, the plus or the minus x. In this case, it looks like it's mounted over here on the right side. So yes. you can choose whether it's minus x or plus x for the rotational axis. You can establish all of these in here, and you would then pick OK to establish the machine tool. All right? Mm -hmm. The next yeah. step is to select your post processor in here. Uh, we do have post processors that we've developed. And I'm going to use the post processor in here. I'm going to pick the one for the Mark 3 uh, machine tool in here. So we have a post processor for Mark 3 machine, and I'm going to pick that as the post processor. So if you go back in here, take a look at it. We have a post processor for Mark 3, and this post is already uh, defined for five axis. You can see the primary is A and the secondary is set to B, and we can customize the post in here as well. And if you'd like to output in inches or millimeters, we can set the units. It's set to output in inches. If you prefer working in millimeters, we can set the output for the post to be in millimeters. So we can work in uh, both inch and millimeter units for the post. Okay. And typically, if you're working in millimeters, you would want to go to three decimal accuracy in here. And you can have a post, one for inches and one for millimeters. Oh, okay. The next step is to orient the part. So when you're both primary and secondary axis is zero degrees, what would be the best way to orient it? So in this particular case, it could be very well that you may want to rotate this by 90 degrees, so for example. So that yeah. would be your initial orientation when you place the part on your CNC table for machining. And you can also set your XYZ origin. Right now it's at the center of the ring in the Z. Mm -hmm. Do you see that, sir? Yes. So you can leave it right where it is or you can change it. Now, for now, we can leave it the way it is, right? Yes. Now, the next thing you would want to do also is, before you cut these uh, grooves out, um, you can actually start out with a band, a uh, circular ring. You can define that as your stock material. So if you already had this uh, pre-cut or you know the blank already preset, you could actually go ahead and define that as your uh, stock blank. So do you have a ring in here that's already preset? I'm sorry. This one, uh, this one we're doing like uh, like uh, uh, we put the gold ring over there, or it's gonna do everything by zero from zero. The scratch you doing the okay. machine is gonna do. Okay. Now, how would you like me to demonstrate programming this part? Do you do we would let's like go to... by let's go by uh, by. Uh, to do everything by scratch. Imagine we put the we put the stock over there, and okay. it's gonna finish with the. Okay. Would you be saw starting with a solid blank of stock in here, or would you be starting with like a hollow stock in here, like a like a donut shape of stock? Solid, solid. Solid. Okay. All right. So what we can do is we can go ahead and define the stock in here. We could click on cylinder stock, 
and we can specify the cylinder stock right there and you can see that it gives you yes, the, uh, yes. the stock dimensions, the radius and the length so we could probably set the radius to be maybe 12 millimeters mm -hmm. or 11.5 so we'll go with 12 and then the thickness for the height is set to 2.6 maybe you can a little bit we're going to leave extra right three millimeters so there it is there's your stock and the next step we want to do is align the stock so align stock you want to center it in the Z and center it in the X and Y. So the stock is now being centered around the part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you may want to design some supports in here in using your tools in Rhino. So you're already familiar with Rhino. So you would probably want to look at uh, adding some supports in here. So I'm going to yes to hold the to hold the uh, on the inside, right? Yes, 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 okay. yes. So like I'm a going hexagonal to make a layer. or something. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do here is basically, uh, you know, just go ahead and put in maybe um, uh, like a, a circle in here. And I'm going to, uh, you know, basically go ahead and use a grid snap. And give me a, a good diameter that you would like to use for the... Uh, That's not important now, just uh, whatever you do. Yeah. So that's we'll gonna hold it, that, hold it from that center, right? The parts. Yeah, we'll just put in like a support structure for it, so to hold it, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna click on this here, and then I'll do a solid extrude planar curve straight. I'll do both sides, so that yes. we we'll just have like some uh -huh. kind of a support structure in here. And now I'll take this and do a transform. Uh, I can just do a, I can Please. just select this in here. I can use the uh, Maybe gumball in here to mm -hmm. you know or I can you know select this and then put in 90 degrees so basically we just put in a support right there right yes and if you don't want it to cut all the way in the center uh, we could do basically we can just put a little uh, area in here so we don't want to cut the entire blank out right yes and I do. I did this with a hexagonal inside. Okay. So, so the holder can hold. The, I mean, when we're doing this is by scratch. It doesn't matter. But when you do, when I'm trying to do only those notches, mm -hmm. the, the casting bolt already that's matter. Yeah, it has to. Right. Wrong. Okay. So I'm gonna just basically save this out in here. So, you know, we got everything saved in here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in this part. Typically, you would want to do it from like two sides, milling it from the top and then from the bottom. That would be the best way to do it, right? Yes. Uh, so what we can do also here is I'm going to also create another geometry in here. So maybe just go past it a little bit. And then I'll mm -hmm. put a surface in here. Surface using uh, planar curve. So that when we do a toolpath, uh, we can actually limit the toolpath to this area. The demo version has this, whatever you just show me. The demo has all of these capabilities. You will not be able to save or post-process in the yeah. demo, but you should be able to do all the steps that we are doing here in the demo. Okay. So you can download it. I can say offset it by one millimeter. Just do an offset on the inside right there. Okay, there you go. So we got everything set up in here, right? So the mm -hmm. first step is we want to go ahead and do some tool pads on it. We want to do some roughing operations on it. So yes. the way we would go about programming a roughing operation is uh, we would need to define some tools and we would start programming our tool pad on it. Now, uh, one of the things we could do is we can bring in a library of tools. I could say I want to load my tool library and I'm going to load this millimeter metric tool library in here and first start with the roughing process. So I'm going to go into uh, you know roughing. So first step is to mill it from the top and then flip it over on your rotary axis to mill it from the bottom, right? Uh -huh. So that would be like a four axis, two sided milling. Mm -hmm. So step one is we'll program three axis and we're gonna say we wanna do a roughing operation. This is indexed machining. And you can pick an area to contain or in this case, I don't even have to pick, it knows where the stock is, where the material is. So I can select the tool. Uh, would a three millimeter ball mill, would that be good for now? To do the roughing? Yes. Yes. Or would you like a flat mill three millimeter? I don't think flat is going to do better. Okay. Uh, you want to pick ball. a flat or a ball mill? Ball. 
ball mill. Okay, three millimeter, or I could even go smaller. I can set my feet and speed in here. We also have a built-in feet and speed uh, calculator where you can have vinyl cam help you establish feet and speed based on the material you're cutting, and this material list can be customized as well. So we'll go with a three millimeter, uh, a 3.175 millimeter. Basically, it's an eight-inch ball mill. Uh, set your feet and speed, and you can see that the clearance is set automatically. Or I can say I only want to go maybe like you know four millimeter above the part. So what the is the pink plate you put on it? This is the safe clearance height. So when the cutter has to move from one location to the next, it'll retract to this clearance plane, or it can lower this clearance height. Oh, okay. So okay. Three millimeters above. And then you go specify your cutting parameters in here. You can specify your tolerances for roughing. You could say how much of stock you'd like to leave. I could say I only want to leave 0.2 millimeter after it's being roughed out. Uh -huh. Specify my uh, cut pattern, uh, step over control, cut directions in here. In the cut levels, you could specify how fine you'd like the cutter to step. And you know, you can say you want to go 50% or 30% tool diameter. And then finally, you can also set your engage and retract parameters. Any advanced cut parameters you'd like to set, like you can fit arcs to tool pads and then you pick generate. So in this process, it's going to analyze your part and the stock and create your roughing tool pad. You'll notice that the cutter was too big. It wasn't able to get into the area on the inside here. So if I go ahead and hide this and then go back and regenerate the tool pad, you'll see that it'll also be able to get in there. You see that, sir? Mm-hmm. Yes. But then uh, I could go back in here, maybe use a smaller tool and also use a smaller uh, step over in here and probably I can go with a much smaller tool, maybe go, uh, that's something, you know, 1.58, you know, 16. Yes, yes. So I can go a 16th inch here, I can modify the tool. Save this up as a new tool right there, and then select the smaller tool and generate the tool pad. So here now we can see that the cutter pad starts well clear of the model. You can also control your engage and retract in here. I can just say go one millimeter extended out. So the linear extensions can be shortened out right there. And there's your roughing in levels. It's doing a three axis but, roughing full pad. Mm -hmm. Now what I've did here is I I hit the um, inside features. Now we can see that the simulation is in progress. Yes. And it shows the material removal. It's doing a roughing in levels. Let me ask you one thing. Is this are we gonna do by manually change the uh to get out the part then put another side? You could do it automatically if you just want to do like a four axis if you don't have the No, this uh, is we cannot put in a right away in a five axis and start work on it. Now this particular part, the way we program it right now here is you rough it from the top, then you have to flip it over to do the other side, right? Yeah, that machine, uh, the fifth axis has to do it. I mean, fourth one has to do it, right? So, if yes, uh, you could, yes, so what the way you would have to do it then is you need to have some kind of a uh, support block underneath it so you can mill it from different sides. We can index it and machine it. You can yeah. rough it by indexing it from different sides. So, what you may have to do is uh, on this machine that you have, you may have to put a piece of block and then mount it on top of it so you exactly, can only rotate yes, yes. 90 degrees. So you can't rotate 180 degrees because that's not going to be feasible. Right? You can't rotate 180 degrees because you have a secondary rotational axis. You can only go maybe up to 90 degrees. So uh, on the machine, this piece could be standing up vertically and then you can machine these features and then rotate that so that you can get to all of the other features on it. What about okay. if if the if you put one uh, uh how do you call it? holder from the middle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to hold it somehow so that you can mill uh, the features on this side as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So we can actually program these uh, angle. We can do like a drilling operation or an engraving operation in a five axis mode in here we can do that that shouldn't be a problem but to be able to rough it out you got to you know either rough it out on a um, you, know, you got to figure out what is the best way to rough it out right yes yes but i don't want to take the part out from the 
You don't want to then put it back. Mm -hmm. If so you do that, if I do that, then I'm going to lose the zeros. Yeah, here you don't have to. You only set up one zero, and that would be the center. So what I would recommend doing is you can actually put a uh, like a block in here, uh, like a cylindrical blank. Um, so for example, I could specify um, you know, something that goes below the base of the part right there. Yes. So that way the part can get rotated and you can still machine it. Yes. Yep. So I can now go back in here for the roughing. I can specify my cut level at the bottom. I can just say I only want to go down to this when I rough it up. So rough it out. Okay. So this will be able to rough whatever it can looking at it from the top, right? Now, what yes, we'll do okay, is okay, then, we'll, uh, we'll rotate the coordinate system, which means we'll rotate your fifth axis using the coordinate system setup, and I'm going to say I want to rotate it by 90 degrees. So the secondary axis gets rotated in here, and now I can program features over here. So for example, I can define uh, like a boundary in here, mm -hmm. and I could go ahead and do a horizontal roughing or I could even do like a re-roughing operation in here in the rotated coordinate setup and I can specify a cut level to how far I would like to be able to cut from this particular side. So I can go ahead and uh, use a pick option, I can use a near selection in here and I could say I would like to go down right to this level in here or I can push it back further. Mm -hmm. So I could say this is how much I would like to cut from this particular orientation and then program a toolpath. <clears throat> so the part in here on the machine would be rotated. So this feature would be normal to the Z axis. So you don't have to go ahead and you know uh, go through the process of uh, re-zeroing it out. So you can do, for example, you can do for 90, uh, you can do 180, you can do it like multiple different setups, you can rough it from multiple, so the C yes. axis or the B axis keeps rotating. You rotate it and you lock it, rotate it and you lock it and you can program it in here using different setups. So in the re-roughing, we can specify our parameters in here. Mm -hmm. We can specify the same amount of stock to be left and we can also specify the step down controls and then we can specify the engage and retracts in here as well and we can do any uh, arc fitting needed for those orientations so this will be able to rough it out from different sides as you can see it and the nice thing about the re-roughing toolpath is it knows what is material being left from the previous step yes, so now yes. uh, we re-roughed re it in here uh, from one of these orientations what I'm going to do next is take this and then rotate it for additional orientations. Now I did uh, about the zero degrees, right? Now I'm going to hold Alt key and rotate this uh, by 45. Right? You can okay. now I can rotate the Z axis in here by 45 degrees again. So the Z will be normal to that. I can make a copy and a paste. Those <clears throat> those curves you did, this is you did by uh, those plans, you did by Rhino, right? Yes, using Rhino. So you can have it saved in Rhino. You can create, you can set the coordinate system to be uh, normal to a surface, normal to a planar curve, an active construction plane, or you can use the spin angle to rotate it. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is for roughing it, I'm creating multiple setups. You can see now, see that it's roughing it out from different sides, right there, right? So you can yes. see the ring was roughed out in here from both the sides. So that's how you repeat the same process in here. So now I can uh, go back in here, select this curve, right? You can go take a look at it from the top view, and then I can do Alt. I can do another rotation of 45 degrees. There you go. So I basically repeat the same step for all the different setups. So I can copy and paste the setup 
and all the angles will be computed automatically. You don't need to worry about having it to recompute the angles. Yeah. <clears throat> this process of uh, roughing is known as indexed machining. So you could do a combination of two and three axis tool passes here. So now you divide it like a six, six portion? I would do three, yes. Uh, I would divide it into 45, so it will be eight, right? Eight, eight, eight sections. Portions. Eight sections, you can do it so, or if you want to do more sections, more than eight, you can do more than eight sections. I'm just basically so you, you. So you cannot do this doing a one, one uh, process. You have to... Um, you could do like a five axis, um, Finishing tool path. Uh, yes, with the five, my 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 goal is to put in a machine, mm -hmm. and five axis does everything. Yes. So here you're basically doing what is called positional five axis to rough it out. So for roughing, you got to do uh, index machining, and then if for finishing, you can do a continuous five axis tool path. Okay. All right. So the next thing we would like to do here is maybe do a couple of more setups in here. And I'm just going to, uh, since you already now know how this works, I'm going to basically rotate it 45 right there. So yes. that should be good enough for that setup. I'm going to make a copy and paste. Control C, Control V will let us copy and paste it. We'll rotate it another 45 degrees on the Y axis. So you can see that the coordinate system is now being rotated. And, and now I can go ahead and, you know, select. This is roughed out right there. The next setup is over here. We'll go ahead and rough it out again. So just change the machining region in here, and then generate your tool pass. Okay. So basically, for roughing, this is the most efficient and quick way to rough it out. So now we can repeat the same for the remaining four patterns in here as well. So I can basically make a copy of this uh, setup in here, right? Mm -hmm. So I can use the same um, copy, paste it down in here, and in this case, uh, yeah. I'd like to. Um, uh, not this one here. Uh, I'm going to rotate it by X and then go right there. And now here, I can just go back in here, uh, select the containment areas for this. Mm -hmm. I can basically make a copy of this region, paste it down here, and then double click on it to modify the region in here. And for 0 and 180, you can pick the same orientations right there. Yeah. So that's how easily you can go ahead and generate and simulate your tool pads. Now once it's roughed out from all the sides, we will go ahead and process the finishing. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly uh, process the finishing tool pad yes. here. So now we got through this, and the next step is we're going to do this in here, right? So I'm going to copy this operation, the setup, copy, and then select it and paste it right in here. So now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees about the Y, right? And then okay. I'll do a uh, 90 again. There you go. Now I can regenerate this tool pad, and that'll give you a tool pad for the other side. So you'll notice that in just a few, like seven or eight steps, you already have it roughed out. And here you're not changing the zeros. You're just working off with one yes. X, Y, Z origin. So you're not having to create multiple origins in here. Now, once you've done this, then the last step here is basically I'm going to go back and uh, we got you know one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to do yes. seven and eight. So we got this in here. And the next one is basically rotating this again by 45. So I can do a copy paste and rotate 45 degrees about the Y axis. And then just go back into this operation in here and then pick the other region. And all of the workflow that you're putting in here can be saved into a knowledge base. So when you have a similar part, you just have to load this entire workflow when you're doing other rings. You don't have to go through the process of recreating yeah. the toolpath right from scratch. So that's the beauty about working with a Rhino Cam and having a knowledge base in place. So that allows you to save your entire workflow. So this is the re-roughing operation, and we're doing the last step on the re-roughing operation now by selecting this boundary. So we only had to create like four of those planes because they can be used from both the sides as you notice. And also it's not cutting air, 
It's only cutting where there's material that needs to be removed, as you see. Yes, yes. Okay, now your part has been fully roughed out, as you can see right there, right? Mm -hmm. So those were your steps for your roughing. Only the and other now, side is uh, not roughed. Inside? Well, we got through everything. You can see that when you look at roughing, it did rough both sides. Oh, it, uh, it's not the same as the other one, but the, that the, well, the yellow part. It is. Uh, yeah, you can see it. It is, uh, you know, did remove all the areas. Okay. With the same amount of stock. Now we can go back and do a, a finishing operation in here. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Now, if you would like to do a, a continuous uh, four-axis finishing or five-axis finishing, uh, you would actually have to um, create like a inside surface on it, and then you can probably do a continuous uh, finishing, or you can basically. Um, you got to select what is called a drive surface and a check surface by doing simultaneous five axis machine. Yes. Now, if the goal here is just to cut these uh, with a like a drill tool at an angle, is that what you're trying to do? Exactly. Okay. Uh, one of the ways. Just I one, can... one shot. Okay. But before you do that, you would want to finish off this band in here, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So you should have a model without these created. Then you can do a continuous finishing around it. Do you have a design? without these being cut out? Uh, I can send you right away. Okay. But or I can, maybe you can create over there in a second. Yeah, I don't know what the dimensions are to be able to create them, so I'm not fully 100% uh, familiar about the right, no. I can I can extract some uh, geometries in here to create it, but I'm not 100% certain what these are, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's, yeah. I did proximity. It's, it's not supposed to be exactly the same, just the same amount of circle, or maybe you did a lot of job already. Yeah, uh, so let's go ahead and try to cut these in here, okay? So, for now, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and use a certain commands in Rhino, so let me go ahead and uh, put a new layer, and I'm going to do duplicate edge. So I'm going to extract one of these edges in here, okay? I mean, listen, listen, if you right-click on a trim, try to right-click. Right-click on the trim, trim. Here, you see my mouse? Mm -hmm. So we can operate this bot? Uh, no, I would need to give you control. Um, give me one moment. Okay, you should be able to operate it now. Okay. Great. No, because there is a line. This is bothers to delete mm -hmm. that. Uh, right. Yeah, if you have the original, uh, if you cancel out of it, you can actually do a section curve and extract it. That might be a better way to do it. Yeah, let me do something. Okay. Intersection, intersection. I customize all my tools. That's why sometimes I. Okay. Revolve it. Yeah. Okay. Did you delete the other objects? Uh, the solid object I deleted. Yeah. Can you sh make it uh, show it? We'll put it on a different layer. Undo the deletion. Okay. Okay. Let's One keep second. Let me also. copy. Yeah. Or just this curve. You can hide the solid objects now. Yeah. So, amazingly, this is, is this my? Yes, that was your file. No, no, this is now my, my, uh... 
how this is came up to your uh, screen? That was what you sent us, sir. Oh, you sent... Oh, okay. Got it, got it, got it. So with the file, you can open all layers too, everything? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and hide that layer. Okay. So now... Um, you can take a control. All right, thank you. So let's take a look at this here, right? So this one, you would basically, um, you can actually program, you know, half of this, right? So you can put a, uh, you, can, you can split it into half, and then you have two halves of this, right? Mm -hmm. So you can actually program this um, in different ways. Um, so if you want to program it like a um, finishing toolpath, you can program using simultaneous five-axis toolpaths in here. So we have, uh, you know, mm -hmm. toolpaths like between curve machining. Uh, so one of the ways I could probably recommend doing this is splitting this on the center line in here. So we can actually go ahead and um, invert everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is put a circle, mm. and then I'll go to the center, right there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a uh, surface, external mm. inner curve weight, okay? okay, and I'll split this. I will split this in here, right? Okay. We'll do a split, select the object to split, cutting off the there. So basically we have one half on the outside and one half on yeah. the inside, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now, uh, on this one here, I'll also do the same thing for, uh, I'll basically uh, grab this in here. We have mm -hmm. the surface edge. Okay, so now we can actually program this on a uh, five axis. Let me go ahead and save this up. We can actually do a true five axis operation. We can do five axis and we can say flow curve machining. Select the drive surface, I can pick that. Okay, and then select the drive curve. We have this curve right in here. That's the drive curve. We can grab a tool for it and it can go along the curve or across the curve. So we want to go along the curve and distance between each curve will give it one millimeter. And yeah. in entry and exit, you can do um, tangential arc or tangential line. So this is a true five axis tool path. You can do a vertical tangential line or however you want to set your entry and exit in here. And then you can also perform a gout check. And in the clearance, you can specify what type of clearance you want to do a plane or it yes. can do a cylinder clearance, it can do a cylinder clearance, stock max plus three millimeters, and you hit generate. So in this process, it'll give you a five axis um, tool pad in here. So we can actually do different types of five axis tool pads. So here we did uh, what is called um, uh, machining, uh, we did machining uh, like a flow curve. Rather than that, I would probably use a between curve machining. So I would split this into like two halves over here also and then do like two halves and two halves that would be that would give you a better finish on it yeah okay, okay. so what I'm going to do here is um, select go to the top view and I'll just put a, a line in here and then I'll select the line surface extrude curve straight okay and then I'll yeah. select this and do a split. We'll do a split, select the object to split, and this will be cutting the object right there. Okay? okay. Now I, I can get rid of these in here. I really, I can leave it in there too. Now what we can do is, um, we have this edge in here, we'll do a duplicate edge. 
We'll grab this one. So if you do a, a five axis, you can do between curve machining. You select the curves, you can pick this one in here, and you can pick this one right in here. Mm -hmm. And then you can select this as your surface. And you can see the surface normal direction. And you can specify the step over distance and create it. So that'll create a between two curve machining tool path. And you can also specify which way you want it to uh, drive the cutter for the gouge check. So you can go ahead and say that. Okay. And you can also specify the direction for the tool path. Or you could even do like between uh, two curve. We can also rotate the coordinate system in here. So for example, you could say you want to rotate the coordinate system by 90 degrees right there, and you can put this up between curve machining operation in here and generate a toolpath. So there's different ways you can uh, program toolpaths in here. So you can do a five axis uh, between curve, or one of the other ways I would probably also do here is we can use this as the surface that not to cut, uh, like you know, we can use this and then we can put this as a gouge. So for example, I could go ahead and say uh, five axis, we could do a surface of uh, normal machining, and I could say select the surface, is this is the surface to cut, right? And then I can put a gouge check, I can say add, and I'm going to add these two surfaces in here, and in the cut levels, um, I'm going to specify this tool, in the cutting parameters, I can specify a step over, and I can set the tool path to be uh, parallel to the Z axis put the operation right in here. The toolpath can be parallel to the Z and generate it. So this will give you a five axis machine. So there are different ways. So what's that surface you put over there? The inside surface is a surface to not to cut. That's like a check for against gouges. Yeah, I may have it saved already, so we'll take a look at it. I probably have it saved for most part of it. Let's take a look. Okay, so looks like... Okay, this was saved right in here, right? Mm -hmm. So, there's different ways you can program the toolpath if you want to program it as a a five axis toolpath. So you can basically go along or across. Uh, you can put, keep the tool normal to the surface. So here I could say, um, you know, in this particular case, I could program this and this could be checking for against gouges against the surface. So that's how our most so of our. Can you system. simulate, simulate so far we did whatever we did? Yeah, so I got to go back in here and then go back and reprogram this because I lost this toolpath in here. I'm going to select this as the surface for cutting, right? And then we'll grab a tool, or we'll go with the 1.5, then we'll put in uh, like a one millimeter, maybe a one millimeter step over. And then you want to check for gouge against this surface in here, and generate it. So we want to put the tool path to be parallel to the Z axis. So that'll make the tool path parallel to the Z axis. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, run a verification in here. So the part will be rotating on it, right? Mm -hmm. So now I could actually just pick this surface in here. So I can go across like a four axis uh, parallel finishing on it, right? We could do that also. So uh, like a four axis finishing toolpath where the ring can rotate constantly. So there are several different ways you could program it. So if you want to do like a continuous finishing, uh, we could actually, um, what I could do here is break this up into multiple sections in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we got the circle right there, right? Mm -hmm. We got this half and we got the inside half right there. So I can split this up into well, uh, create multiple sections in here. So 
So what I'm going to do here is collect this to a surface, extra planar curve, straight. I will do it both sides. And I'll do a split. Object to split this one with this one right here. And then we got this right in here. I can go to the top and I can do the same thing in here. Do an extrusion and then this. Okay, so now one of the ways I could program this is using five axis and I could say use uh, between two curve machining, right? Mm -hmm. And I can select the curves here, this one right here. I can pick this one right in here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then select the surface for machining is this one right in here. And then grab a tool for it. And in the cutting you can specify the step over generate it. So that will give you a 5 axis uh, machining in here, but then okay, we, check the okay. normal. we will have to check the surface normal direction. So in this particular case, you can see it right there. So I have to make sure I put my gouge check in the direction so it's going on the outside in here. Right? Yeah. So I can, I can set all of those parameters in here in the um, entry and exit and the gouge check in here. So I can go to clearance, I can make sure it's using a cylinder clearance right there. So it's clearing on a cylinder and then I got to make sure the entry and exit directions are not into the part. I can say uh, tangential arc. So all those parameters can be set, but you can take a look at it here. When you look at it in the simulation, That's a simultaneous five axis cutting motion. You see the Armin? Yes. So which means that the part would be rotating constantly. Now the other option for you to do is uh, program this as a, a parallel finishing tool path. Uh, okay, but uh, now whatever, but, uh, what is the other part is uh, hidden? The inside one here? No, 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 the one I send you. Yes, so for that, we would have to do it at an angle. So let me go ahead and uh, save this up in here. And let's go ahead and show the layer four right here, right? Uh-huh. Okay, let me go ahead and hide these in here. So this is how we can finish that. And then let me go ahead and hide this and make this visible right there, okay? So here, we want to cut these features out, right? So one of the things I'm going to do here is um, I'll just... Can you just uh, give me control for one second? Sure, you got control. Okay, I got a control. Trying to show, or you're trying to array it? Okay. Okay. So we'll just basically. Uh, okay. I on. want the tool came and cut like that. Sure. Sure. We'll do that here. Give me one moment. This is imagine the tool. Mm -hmm. We have a solid object. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Right? So you want to cut this, right? So the way you would do it is, uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. One of the ways I would do it is yeah, using um, index machining in here. So I can put a point at the center of this right here. Okay? And now you can array them for each of those orientations. This is not solid. Let me, let me, uh, underneath this is not solid. I, uh, I forgot to cap. Is yeah, it okay? That's fine. We, we want to basically just drill that hole. So this is just the imagination of the tool, right? So yeah. to analyze the diameter in here, so we know what the diameter is, uh, that's 1.97, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll have a tool, uh, we'll just make a tool that's uh, 1.97, right? We'll put a ball mill, is that good? 1.97 or you want to use a flat mill? Doesn't matter, 1.9 is the same uh, diameter, it's fine. Okay. Save as new tool. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my uh, Z axis. So I'm going to do a coordinate system setup and I can pick a surface. And you can see that the Z axis is normal to that surface. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, all I got to do is do a two axis engraving. I just pick the point right in here and then I grab the tool and then I can specify the depth. Mm -hmm. so that'll basically program your tool path in here. So let's say we want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to run this uh, roughing tool path. Okay, so let me clear this. So I'm going to go ahead and save the work. So let me uh, go back in here. Let's go through the roughing tool pattern here and I'll show it to you in just a moment. So there it's roughing it from the top, right? Yes. So if you had started with a cylindrical blank, uh, you could have done like a four axis tool path on it too. So you could have rotated it to 90 degrees and then done a four axis tool path. And then you can use this engraving in here to go ahead and you can see that the tool is at an angle, which means the part will be rotated over. You can cut that right there in just one shot. That's what I want. Yep. Okay. So you basically make that, you repeat that, and then you can repeat the same operations a number of times you have. You can create a number of setups, and each setup will automatically just rotate it, increment it, and program it. So this is called, this is how you would do this using index machining. You just have to have a point, and then the surface, what you had there earlier, will let you set the Z normal to the surface. And you can just do an engraving, and you give it a depth, how deep you want it to cut. So, okay, can you... Does the does everything just itself? It's gonna turn around now. You cannot do everything automatically. You gotta when you program it, you gotta index it. But then on the machine, it'll be all automatic. Every rotation will be automatic. So, for example, in here, uh, let's say, I want, do you know how many copies you have on it? Uh, I forgot. Uh, I can probably count it a part of it, right? Let me see if my parts are here. Uh, I'll see here one. Yes, Two, three, four, five, six. Six times four. Twenty-four, right? Four. You got six for each quadrant, so that'll be a total of twenty-four. Yes. So what I'm going to do here is do a array, transform, no, array. It's not twenty-four. It's not twenty-four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 18, 20. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 20? Okay. Oh no, it's a 20. Okay, so we'll do an array, uh, transform, array, polar, center is 0, number of copies 20, 360. There you go. Okay, you're right. Okay, perfect. Right? We got all of them in there, right? And okay. also the Z location. Um, you can actually select these points and drop it down in the Z if you need to. You don't have to have it at the top, right? Yeah. That's the point the tool is going to start the dig, I mean, yes. uh, work? Yeah, that'll, or wherever you want it to start, for example, yes. 
So you just had to, you had the extruded cylinder, right? Yes. Right over there. So that's based off that. Now what we can do here is we got the first setup right there, and it's a 20 degree differential between each setup. So you basically rotate it by 20 degrees about your. What's the base? Uh, the machining, the tool you have, you want to grab the wax or gold. It's so, a rhino, which one? The zero. Your zero, zero, zero is still the same right here, what you have in rhino. This is the origin, that's your XYZ zero. And all of the angles are computed for you. Oh, okay. So we, rhino cam will take care of computing the angles. Now here, you can notice that um, in this particular case, I just need to rotate about the about the x-axis. I can go rotate it by, you know, um, it's 18, 18 degrees. Is that correct? Every 18 degrees, you have one. Uh, right. Yeah. So you change the rotation now, or is it uh, 360 divided by 20? Right. Mhm. Mm so 360 divided by 20, 18 degrees. So you basically go back in here and rotate them and then you just program each of it right there. So that's how you basically go ahead and uh, program it. That's how easy it is. So you got this one program right there, right? Mm -hmm. So you rotate the coordinate system for every step and that'll let you program it. So right now your Z axis is normal to this. This point mm -hmm. that you program right there. Am I correct? Yes. So now you rotate it to this orientation in here. Now if I go back in here and say show the surface in here, and I'm going to go ahead and um, select this, this. So we got those surfaces in there, right? Yeah. So if I do a transform array polar, There it is. Right? Yes. So now, I just have to go, you know, you can either select this in here at each step, or you can actually just make a copy and a paste of the setup in here, and then you got through the first setup. For the next setup, you can just say select the surface, and just go pick that. You can see that now the z-axis is normal to that, and all you got to do is just pick that point right there, generate it. So you got your tool back for that. So you basically set the z-axis normal to it, and then you program the tool back. So you pick the surface that's normal to that, right? Mm -hmm. Here you go pick this one right here. So you can see that now here your, your z is normal to the surface. You program it. There you go. So the next step, repeat the same step again, copy and paste. And you want to change this to right here. And then you go back in here and then just change to pick the surface. So your z-axis is normal. So now when I go run a simulation, you'll see that this particular one is finished right there. And then automatically it'll go from this to the next one. Uh -huh. So the index angles are computed automatically. You don't have to compute the angles. So yeah. everything yeah. Is based off your XYZ zero, RhinoCam will compute those angles for you. So that's how you can go about programming it. So now if I go back and take a look at the machine setup, this is what we had. If I post process just these three setups in here. I'm going to pick setups uh, 10, 11, and 12. I'll do a post, and I'm going to call this uh, test one. You will see that the angles are computed. You can see that the, you know, a angle. You can see that the angles are being output right there. Okay. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, check. Okay, the primary and the secondary are already set. Let's go ahead and take a look at the post processor in here. I need to make sure I pick the post processor in here. And let me go back and repost it. 
So I had not selected the post processor. Now you can see that it gives you the angle for B is 90, A is 41. And then the B yes. changes to 72 and A is 41. And then B is 54. So you can see that it's automatically changing the angle. So you just have to, when you program it, this would be like an index toolpath. And then once it's programmed, your output will have all the angles, so it will index it, so it will okay. index it, lock it in, you do the drilling, retract, index, lock it in, do the drilling, retract, because you can't be so, rotating while it's cutting that. Yuban, uh, so this piece you can start with the f five axis and finish with the one shot, only you have to change the tools, that's what I want, is it possible? Yeah, here is the goal here is only to cut those um, shapes, right? In this particular case, the only, the only thing you're trying to do is these. Yes. Yes. So that's how you do it here. You don't need to do any roughing or finishing because it's already, the blank is already, you know, pre-cut. So you can probably pre-cut the blank on a four-axis setup. And then no, no, no. If, if I want, I put the gold right there and I start millet. Okay. In this case, if you're going to be putting the metal, then you're just going to be cutting these, right? Yeah. Okay, because you wouldn't be uh, you know, turning everything in here into chips. So what you would do is basically do exactly what we did in here. Index them, and let me save this up as a second file, do a save as, and I'm going to go ahead and save this out as a different name in here. I'll call it. Okay, if I put a rough gold and there are rough wax mm -hmm. with the five axes, Start to finish. Only I have to change the change the tools, right? Well, in this particular case here, uh, yeah. In this particular case, what you're doing is first, if you're going to be starting with a blank, then you got to do it. Uh, you know, you got to rough it first, and then before you can go to. Finish. Yeah, rough it, but not for use a four axis or three axis. Then put the other one. Well, you'd have to rough it using either. Um, a index machining technique or one of those techniques because you don't do a simultaneous five axis roughing in simultaneous five axis so you'd have to do index roughing process and then do finishing so similar to what we did earlier in here so you can see that all of these steps what we did is a roughing process and then you can go ahead and do a finishing on it oh, okay so you would still have to do index roughing so which means uh, let me go ahead and um, select these points in here and I'll put them all also on this layer. I'll put the points back on this um, layer four, right? A layer one. Yeah. So, if you're going to be doing a, a roughing tool pad, then the first step is this is what I would recommend doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is how I would rough it out. <coughs> So this is the blank, right? This is you. So basically what I'm going to be doing is, uh, if you're going to be starting out with a wax, so let me go ahead and um, reorder these operations in here. I'm going to take the setups and drag them out here. So. Okay, so let me save this out. So you would have to basically um, come up with a way to rough and finish it in here. I need to go simulate it to end. So you got to go through first roughing and finishing this up, right? Yes. With the blank to this um, shape. You can also do like a, a four axis finishing or you could come up with different techniques to finish it up. So here you can see that it's roughing it out over there, right? Mm -hmm. So basically we would go through this step in here to do a rough. So in this case we are doing a roughing so that the material gets removed. And then we would go ahead and do a finishing operation on it. So that would be a roughing process if you're going to be starting out with just a piece of wax or you can go directly into four, you can do a finishing cut. 
Yeah. So uh, I actually have a, uh, a video on our website where one of our jewelers does use a combination of these to um, use it with Rhino Cam for five axis. They have a similar type of machine uh, with uh, using Mach 3. Mach 3? Yep, Mach 3 controller. Yeah, this the one I have. It's a Mach 3 too. Yeah. That's so it's G -code a, for G code, right? That is correct. So basically simulating these in here, and then we can go back and program like a finishing cut on it. And as you can see it right there. And now you basically do the engraving tool back. Now I can see that I can select these two and do a simulate. 